Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today at Wynette's Crafting Corner. So I'm starting a new series. I'm hoping to film it every Saturday, and I'm calling it Slow Stitch Saturday. I've asked some of my viewers if they wanted to come along with me to do some slow stitching and I will intersperse just a few stories here and there. But what I have before me is a vessel or a bowl that I am making for my daughters. Look at how this is uh, just crumbling up. It's uh, the outside of some Italian silk thread. But anyway, I am making this vessel or this bowl for my daughter's cabin, which is very rustic. It's up in the mountains. And so these sides are going to come up so that they can throw TV controllers or just whatever in here. Now, what I'm going to do to strengthen these sides, and I hope it works out, is I bought this chicken wire from Amazon. And look, it fits perfectly in there. So I may have to double it up on both the inside and the outside. But once I stitch that there, I think it's going to work. Um, that was just a text from my daughter. I'm watching my grandkids tonight. They're heading up to the cabin. They're having some new landscape being put in. And so they want to talk to the landscaper. And so even though the kids are a little bit older, Olivia's 17, my granddaughter, she said, well, I really would like an adult there at the house, even though they're really good kids. So anyway, that's my plan. And I've got a lot of it already done. The color on her couch is the, the blues and the cream colors. And this is my plan for the back of it. Now, this is going to be the inside. The back of it, and I think I've showed you guys this before, kind of what my plan is going to be, is I'm going to take part of that feed sack and stitch it on the back. And I may even add, you know, well, I'm going to have to add more of either this fabric or I have this old fabric. So I'm going to have to piecemeal this. Um, but I just, isn't this fantastic, these old feed sacks? So that's my plan for the back after I get all the stitching da done. Now... Let me turn this back over and I am going to start stitching. Now, one of the things I'm going to add in here, these are some fabrics and they're just tea towels and I bought them at the antique shop in Italy and I'm going to insert a small little video here of that antique shop so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm heading into this antique market here and it is in Italy. And watch your step there, Bernie. And we have an appointment with this gal. I've been here before, she had wonderful things. And there's a step there. Yep. And so let's go in and see what uh, what we can find. Okay, I think it's the next door. It's next door over. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Anche questo era molto bellino. Ma questi li ho presi da me, sì. Tutti insieme. Tutti insieme, sì. Ma questo è rovinato. Fatemi vedere che riuscivo. Ah, questo. Oh, she's, yes. Molto rovinato. <laughs> this one is just beautiful. Questo è molto bellino, guarda qui, guarda la donnina. È carina, sì. Stunning. I can imagine how much work it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of time. Ma non so, non lo farò mai questo. Sono Luisa da tanto tempo. And this is their collection of antique laces. And here is those two lovely women, a mother and daughter who run the shop. What I've decided to stitch that piece of fabric down is some of my silk threads that I bought at the haberdashery store in Italy. And it was so funny, you'll see in the video um, a big pile of the threads and Rachel and I were going through the threads and I was picking out all the perfect ones meaning the ones with all the beautiful labels on them <laughs> because you know I want to resell them in my my Etsy store She's like yelling at me, you're taking all the perfect ones. I mean, but we are laughing so much. And then she's like, then she would like throw some my way. Here, take this one. Here, take that one. Like you guys have heard me say before, she is one of the most generous people out there. We were laughing so hard. Many. Oh my god. Oh. 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 oh, bellissimo. Look at all Oh, those. I love them. Oh, oh, look at that. So okay. What's in there? J and H. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you a lot for thank everything. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ci vediamo thank presto. You. Thank you so much. You're going to oh, it's okay for you to be on YouTube? Oh, yes, no problem. Here, yes, uh, yes. You can well. Thank I, you very much for I will do it. Yes, me yes. on YouTube. So. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I will get to visit. If all the people who want to come to visit, we are, you will be, will be so welcome, many. everybody. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. So I am just going to take this thread and... I decided to do kind of a dark color here. And this one is definitely from Italy. But a gal who ordered some from me, she messaged me and she was absolutely lovely about it. She was um, just letting me know. She was very kind and she said, I just want you to know that in the listing, you have the threads as 100% silk Italian, but some of them are from Germany. And so I went looking through the threads and she was absolutely correct. So I've gone in and I've changed the listing. And instead of saying, 100% Italian silk. I just put 100% silk thread because it is 100% silk thread. Now what I ought to do is take a pin 
and pin that down so it doesn't move on me. The, the thing about this piece is it's so big that it's kind of difficult to move her around. But the coffee table, I think I showed you a picture of it. The coffee table that is in their cabin. And maybe if I turn it around this way and then just do some running stitches, I'll be able to do it. But anyway, the coffee table in their cabin is massive. It was made out of a, a tree stump. And it's, it's just stunning. I'm just going to do this. That is the beauty of slow stitching. And let me grab my wool mat to go underneath it. That is the beauty of slow stitching. It does not have to be perfect. And I think that's the reason I embraced it. I had at one time been a quilter and I have even taken taken applique classes and see the only thing is I want smaller stitches than that uh, but I've taken applique classes and I've done all that fine stitching in the past and it's fun and it was fun to learn however this slow stitching is so much more fun because you can be as wonky as you want. I'm going to come around this way. So anyway, we had so much fun together, Rachel and Vern. Now Vern is from Triple V Vintage. She has, you've heard me say this before, she's got the best coffee dyed paper out there. And um, she went with me on the trip. And uh, we had so much fun. We laughed so much. Oh, so I do have to tell you this story. So on one of the evenings, um, Rachel and Steffi took Vern and I out to dinner. And where we went to dinner was up this very windy road to the top of this mountain where this castle was. And it, I mean, literally, it was. Now I was in the back seat and I could feel myself getting car sick. But dumb on me, I didn't want to say anything. But <laughs> Vern said she could tell because all of a sudden, you know, she would say, Wynette, look over there, you know. And I'm t literally sitting in the back seat, staring out the front, and I'm not moving my head because I'm afraid if I move my head that it's just going to make me sicker. So by the time we get up to the restaurant... <laughs> Here's a picture of the restaurant the first time I went. I am so car sick that we get out and they sit us at the table and I know I'm white as a ghost. And Steffi kept looking at me. Rachel was sitting right next to me so she couldn't see me as well. But Steffi kept looking at me and I did say, I said, oh, I feel really sick. Not like I was going to, you know, throw up because I didn't have anything in my stomach. But I know, and I was sweating and I'm just, and at one point I said, I just have to go outside and get some fresh air. And it was, again, like I said, it was it was way up on this hill. So up on this hill, there was so much wind and it was very cool that most people had like a sweater or jacket on. Well, I was so hot and sick 
that I just have my short sleeves on and I'm out there and I'm just like, oh, I didn't know whether to sit. I didn't know whether to stand. And then there was one uh, like breezeway that the wind was really whipping through there that I thought, oh, this is where I need to stand. Oh, you know what? This will help if I just do this like this. So anyway, I'm standing there. And at one point I thought, okay, you know, you're going to be okay. Don't be rude. Steffi and Rachel are taking you out to dinner. Go back in the restaurant. So I go back in the restaurant and Rachel says, we ordered some, you know, flat bread. And maybe if you put some bread in your stomach, it'll make you feel better. And, uh, well, let me tell you, that bread was, well, actually, it was cooked on a wood-burning oven. So it had that beautiful charred flavor, and they had just, I think, a little bit of olive oil on it. I don't know what all was on it, but it was delicious. And that was the thing that did make me feel better, but it did take a while for me to <laughs> recuperate from that. And so then when we were, you know, having dinner, they said, uh, well, you're, you're riding in the front on the way home. And I didn't argue. I said, yes, that would be great. I would, I would love to ride in the front. Well, you know, it didn't quite matter because by the time we got home after dinner. I wasn't quite as sick as I was when we got to the dinner, but I was still sick. So much so, thank goodness it was late at night and, and Steffi and Rachel were tired too, and we were tired, um, that I just said, you know, I'm sorry, I got to go, you guys. <laughs> I just want to go lay down and... Uh, you know, get over this. And so I hugged him real quick and I, you know, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for dinner. Oh my gosh. But it was like very, very, very difficult. And you know what? I, I always got car sick as a kid. We'd go camping up in the mountains and it was always a big windy road and even though I was riding in the back of the pickup truck, you know, these were the days before seat belts and you just threw your kids in the back of a pickup truck and you headed down the road. And, and even though I was back in the back of the truck, I still would get sick as a dog and we'd get to the campsite and I would have to lay down for an hour or so and it never failed and so you know if I know I'm gonna be on some kind of a windy road or something like that I will take a medication called meclizine it's the same thing as called antivert you can get it over the counter there was the longest time when you had to get a prescription for this medication, but now it's over the counter. And if I know I'm gonna be susceptible to getting car sick or seasick, I will take that. And uh, I mean, I've even done big cruises where I did one cruise um, when I went to Turkey and Israel, Egypt, and there was one night when we were at sea and I'm telling you it was a big old cruise ship and that ship was rocking so much literally as people were walking down the hall they were like walking to this side and walking to that side and I never got sick at all because I just know if I take that medicine I'm gonna be okay but Anyway, I thank goodness I was okay by the time dinner was served and dinner did help a lot and 
we had, oh my gosh, I think we had a couple of different pasta dishes. We had the flatbread. We had uh, a meat platter, a, a roasted potato platter, a vegetable platter. Uh, Steffi and Rachel shared a bottle of wine. Uh, it was perfect because Vern is not a drinker either. So we were... <laughs> We were in bed every night by eight o'clock. We were definitely not out to party or anything like that. Not like Steffi and, and Rachel are either, but um, it was just nice, nice that, you know, when you're traveling with somebody that they don't drink either. But anyway, so it was fun. It was a great trip. So I love how this is looking. Just go underneath there. I want to keep as much of the blue as possible what other stories can i tell you well there was another night where the previous night i had told um rachel that i wanted to take her and steffi and then rachel's mother and father-in-law out to dinner to the restaurant that we had gone to the very first time i was in in italy with them and this restaurant, again, the food just to die for, um, they had served us a pasta platter with fresh black truffles shaved over the top. Here is a picture of that pasta with the truffles. And I'm telling you, there were so many truffles on this platter and I know black truffles they are not cheap they are little on, a little on the pricey side and uh, but anyway we went out to d dinner with um, Rachel and her in-laws and her mother-in-law gave me two Italian books and I literally I I almost started crying I was close to tears at the table. It was just, she is a lovely lady. She, and you can tell she loves Rachel and just, you know, Steffi is just delightful. And I can't say enough things, good things about my trip. It was, it was tons of fun. Let me see. I have a little notebook here that I wrote down stories because I knew I would forget about them. Let's see, what other little story can I tell you guys as I stitch away here? Oh, so there were one, there was one night where Vern and I had, um, well, there was three nights. We stayed in, in Florence to tour Florence. And um, we had gone to a restaurant, it was excellent, Food. Again, I don't think you can get a bad meal there. It, the food is just so good. But anyway, we had gone to a restaurant and um, there was a lady. We were sitting inside because it was kind of chilly. We were sitting inside and there was a lady sitting outside uh, by herself. Um, but you could tell she was either a regular because the wait staff, you could tell they knew her, they recognized her. And um, at one point, they brought out a dessert for her with a candle on the top. And they started singing to her in Italian, happy birthday. And uh, so, you know me, I... I just jump right in. It doesn't matter. I, uh, I jumped up, ran outside, and I stood next to those waiters. And I was singing to the lady in English, happy birthday. It's the same, you know, melody or tune. And, uh, oh, we were laughing and she's blowing me kisses. And, oh, it just, you know... She was just delightful, and the wait staff was de delightful. Oh, and then the 
you know, I don't know if you know this about um, the difference between dining in Europe and dining here in the U.S. Here in the U.S., we pretty much, you know, we eat and then we get up and we're ready to leave. Well, in Europe, they will sit and visit and, you know, continue with their, you know, whatever they may be drinking and then they will have a coffee and they really just visit. And the other thing that I had noticed was people are not on their cell phones there like they are here. I mean, the young people too, they are sitting, visiting with each other. And I was so impressed with that. I think, and I, I don't mean to badmouth my country, and I don't, believe me. I love living here in the United States. It's a fantastic country, but I think we are just getting out of control with the phones and not carrying on conversations with each other. But anyway, back to um, uh, the story of uh, dinner is... So there you pretty much have to ask for your bill. They're not going to just write, bring it to you right away and rush you out of there. So um, I think I had said finally to the, the waitress, um, we're ready for our bill. And she, because I had jumped in and sang with them and just, you know, just, visited with them. They said, oh, no, 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 you got to stay here all night with us. So, uh, you know, I'm very much like my father. My father, um, he never met a stranger, that saying. He, he talked to everybody. He teased everybody. He, he tried to make them feel comfortable. He, you know, everybody at like from the checkout stand to, uh, oh, and he would always like, he'd be driving. This is my dad. So he's driving and he's got his hands on the steering wheel. As a car would come to pass, that'd be my dad just raising the hands to wave at somebody. And so I'm very, I'm similar. And I know I sometimes embarrass my daughter and my grandchildren because I just yammer away to people and talk to them. And I, I tease them and I joke and I just, you know, I just, I, I enjoy life. I enjoy people. Definitely, I enjoy my solitude here in my craft room also, but when I'm out and about, I want to talk to people. So anyway, so this stitching is similar to like, I think what they call a canther stitch. So I just think, you know, after a while, it goes through a, see, I, don't, I just don't finish sentences, do I? You just guys have to get used to that with me. So... <laughs> It goes through kind of an ugly stage, you know, when you're stitching and then it goes through a, a, a better stage or it looks better. Like right now, this looks better um, because you can see all the stitches and they, they kind of, you know, form lines and, and it looks more purposeful. So anyway, I hope you guys like this series. I I mainly am doing it so that I can get some stitching done. I don't know how long I've been working on this vessel for my daughter, but I get distracted with, you know, working on a, a journal and then, um, you know, filling, putting in Etsy orders and doing, you know, I'm telling you, you guys, when you, if you, you have an Etsy store, you know what it's like to put in those listings. They take a long time. You have to, you know, describe it and then you have to um, take photos of it. And, you know, if you take 10 photos and that's better for the listing and 
oh, it just takes a really long time. And I mean, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I, I love my, my creativity. I met with um, a banker yesterday. I finally am getting my own checking account for my business. But anyway, I met with the banker yesterday and he, he you know, he was asking me about retired life and how that was going. I said, I told him, I said, I am loving it. I said, I couldn't be happier being retired. I said, I'm busier than ever. I'm just nonstop. And, uh, and he goes, I can tell you're a pretty happy person. I said, I am. I haven't always been. I've you know, you just, I think you learn. Well, I've tried to learn as I've gotten older, just, you know, you can make a choice in this world, how you want to be, you know, whether you want, whether or not you want to be an old sourpuss or, or happy with people. I like how that looks. I really like how that looks. So I'm going to uh, tie this off and then let's see what else I can do. So I'm going to tie it off and look a little bit more, turn the camera off, see what it looks like, and we'll go from there, you guys. I could not resist. I had to throw these pictures in because these are some good people here. So I was looking at what other things I could add to this, and I had bought this ribbon in Italy. It says handmade and I don't really care for the little cutesy hearts so I cut those off and I just put in a, a small piece there and I'm going to stitch it down with just some plain uh, accrue colored thread. Now the silk threads that I showed you before that I was using, I do have them for sale in my Etsy store. They are packs of 11. Some are Italian and some are German, but they are 100% silk. And so if you're interested, go on over there and take a look. And I'm just going to stitch this down here over this lace and I think what I'm going to do is just come up where they have kind of that stitching already or the look of stitching and just go over that and tack this down Oops, got a little knot there. Well, there we go. I think I got it. Well, no, I think I have to pull. Oh, wait, that's there. I hadn't pulled that all the way through. So, yeah, I just had to run outside real quick and turn on the sprinkler for my yard. Here in Arizona, we are lucky enough to be able to have green grass year around. And it's called winter grass or another name for it is rye grass. But I had my landscaper lay down seed for it when he was here on Wednesday. And then you have to water it a couple of times a day so that it will germinate. But it's so nice to be able to have grass, green grass in your yard year round. Now, of course, we have to put up with the heat all summer long, but it's starting to get really nice outside. It's still warm in the daytime, though. It still is hitting like 90 degrees 
in the day, but it does cool down at night, but then there's only one. It seems like, you know, there's always something to kind of fuss about. But so what happens is we have beautiful, wonderful air conditioning here in Arizona. You have to, to survive here in the heat when it's 117 outside during the summer. So your air conditioner, you've got a good air conditioner and it runs a lot. However, when it starts to cool down, it doesn't run as often in the night. And the other night, I woke up at three in the morning, kind of hot. And I have it set for 73, but because it really wasn't kicking on and circulating, I woke up hot and I got up and turned it down a degree. <laughs> oh, shoot. We hardly ever use any heat in the wintertime. You just, you just don't need to. What I like to do is have an electric blanket on. And when I first get in the bed, I flip on that. Ow, I stuck myself. I flip on that electric blanket and heat up the bed. And then I turn it off before I go to sleep. And then I'm warm enough all night long. So I love how this looks. And because my daughter, her dad was born in Italy. This is perfect for her to have that written handmade in Italian. So let's tie this off. So off camera, I stitched this little piece down. It is from a tablecloth that I bought in Italy. And my friend Vern said, if you don't get it, I'm going to get it because sometimes it's difficult to find uh, crocheted pieces that are square or rectangle. So hopefully I'm going to get that in my shop soon, some of those. But I, I did do a little coffee staining on it so it would be dark. And I've added that to the piece. Then you saw me add this. I took another small piece of a different this was the, the one um, tea towel, and this was another tea towel. Do you see how the blue is a little bit different than this one? So I stitched this down off camera, and then I started some stem stitching here, and I will have some you know, little stems coming off of there. And then my plan is to use this silk ribbon and to put some lazy daisy stitches as the little flowers there. So anyway, I'm going to end this video here. I hope to, like I said, do one every Saturday. I hope you follow along, especially when I go to construct the vessel and show you how that turns out. But anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you guys again soon. Thanks, and bye-bye.